What is going on Dragon Ball fans? Welcome back to another Dragon Ball fan manga breakdown review where today we're going to be reviewing a fan manga entitled Dragon Ball Multiverse which is a fan made manga set within its own timeline outside of the main canon of Akira Toriyama and Toei Animation involving both characters from Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z as the overall concept of Dragon Ball Multiverse involves universes from all timelines and dimensions to gather together and battle in one tournament in order to determine which one of the many participating universes competing in this tournament will be the first to obtain the prize of the Dragon Balls for their own personal usage, as for many years now I've been reviewing and introducing all kinds of Dragon Ball fan mangas to the world created by the community for the community, so if you guys are interested in seeing and reading up on incredible stories and concepts such as Dragon Ball AF, Dragon Ball Legendary, Dragon Ball New Age, Dragon Ball X, and many others, then feel free to check out the Dragon Ball fan manga playlist in the description box for more videos such as this, as right now we are going to be diving into a brand new manga chapter as before we begin, if you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications to be the first to know when a new video is posted onto this channel as we kick off the Dragon Ball Multiverse manga chapters number 47 and 48 special with the narration having to state the year is 623 capital planet of the Emperor King Cold as the narration goes on to state this story happened in all universes except the second and the fifth as we see both Cooler and Frieza battle damage seemingly enough in their second forms as Cooler goes on to state still so arrogant Frieza as Frieza states it's you that is wrong cooler you see we're equally strong even though you're the eldest thus I deserve an equal portion of the universe as cooler replies idiots we're fighting in the same form of reduced strength because you're unable to control your normal form. I can do it perfectly though. In this, I am far superior than you. As Frieza states, oh yeah? Let's turn to normal form then, as Frieza implies that he's fighting his brother solely for the controllable purpose of having the other portion of the universe as they are fighting for their equal share. And as Frieza begins to power up, all of a sudden, Frieza and Cooler get whacked by King Cold. As King Cold stands above his sons and having to stay more Bonds. You're fighting without my permission. You dare talk about sparring in normal form? Do you want to destroy my planets? I am the one who decides which part of the universe you get to conquer, not you. Insinuating the fact that both Cooler and Frieza were going to reach their normal forms and having to settle things in their full powered states, until of course King Cold showed up to put an end to Frieza and Cooler's bickering. As the narration continues, the year is 737, the day of planet Vegeta's destruction. Destruction. Example Planet Plant. The following happened in every universe except for the second, the fifth, the first, the tenth, the third, and the ninth. We see Frieza inside of his ship as one of his men goes on to state master. We've detected a spaceship nearby. Your brother. As Frieza says cooler, what is that scoundrel doing in my territory? As Zarbon states, well nothing, he's leaving. As Frieza goes on to reply by stating good. I'll forgive him this time. Let's head back. As the narration states, the two brothers didn't know that in most universes, this was the very last time they'd run into each other, as their destinies were now sealed by this little Saiyan they'd both spared, which happened to have been Goku. In the year 764 at an unknown place, the following happened in universes 4, 6, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20, implying that each individual set event is different in comparison to said timelines and universes. As as we see Cooler sit down, he goes on to reply by stating what? A pathetic Saiyan killed my brother and my father? As Salza says yes, it's hard to believe, on a planet called Earth. As Cooler's pissed, he goes on to state so, that's the one that almost killed Frieza on Namek. They went to eliminate him, there's no doubt he really is a Super Saiyan. As Cooler states wait, my father couldn't defeat him? What happened? As Salza states, your father couldn't unleash his normal form, so he was killed in his reduced form. As Cooler laughs by stating, huh, my father is incredible in his normal form. That'll teach him for not working on mastering it and not being able to sustain it all this time like I did. So now I'm the most powerful being in the whole universe. Too bad. I was sure that in three or four hundred years, I would have surpassed my father and could have killed him myself. Salza, as Salza states yes, Cooler goes on to state we're going to Earth immediately. It's time to wipe out the Saiyans 
once and for all. As a few days later, the narration states universes 4, 6, 11, 16, 17, and 20. As the narration continues, a few days later, universes 4, 6, 11, 16, 17, 18, and 20, with Goku having to state, we have three whole years to train, we can certainly have a picnic. While in this universe, this is the future timeline, universes 12, 14, and 15, with Goku having to continue, come on Chi Chi, Gohan can just finish his homework after the small picnic. As over up in the sky, we see how Cooler arrives with his men, and we see how Piccolo battles against Salsa, with Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan having to do the same. So a very similar outcome had occurred just as we saw in the Cooler's Revenge movie, except here we see how Goku was already a Super Saiyan right before Cooler transformed. As Cooler goes on to state, I understand how you were able to kill them with this power, but me? I've got another level. As Cooler begins to transform into his final form, just as we've seen in Cooler's Revenge, Goku goes on to state, oh, he's much stronger than before. As immediately Cooler rushes in and headbutting Goku across the field, that's when the battle between Super Saiyan Goku and Final Form Cooler commences. And this is extremely different in comparison to what we've seen in the movie, because there seems to be a back and forth struggle between Cooler and Super Saiyan Goku. And the difference here is that it is clear as day that Cooler here is showing signs of resistance. As he knocks Goku down into the dirt, we clearly see him unleashing such attacks where it's cutting right through the earth as he goes on to state oh he's tough and what's really cool is as goku emerges from the crater he has a massive laceration going across his chest as cooler goes so <laughs> Did I go too hard? Sorry, I have a tendency to let myself get carried away when I'm in my augmented form, but I am quite surprised of your endurance. I thought you'd be less rugged, as Goku says, and you haven't even seen my full power yet. Don't make the same mistake as your brother by underestimating me. As Cooler says, okay, we'll see. And the difference is very clear in seeing what we saw in Cooler's Revenge of the Movie in comparison to the Dragon Ball Multiverse manga, because it looks like there is somewhat of a struggle between the two as Goku rushes in, we see how the battle commences, and this fight, I would have to say, serves its purpose because Cooler is said to be stronger than Frieza, and being that Cooler seemingly enough is keeping up with Goku, it's a very refreshing thing to see, especially considering how strong Cooler is. Meanwhile, we see how Vegeta gets rid of one of Cooler's men and having to state, huh, and you are starting to annoy me. That power... Kakarot, as of course we've never seen Vegeta, a part of the Cooler movie before, just before Gohan is about to get wiped out by one of his men, he is immediately saved by Piccolo's special beam cannon as it cuts right through his opponent's chest. And Gohan goes to go, Piccolo, Krillin, are you okay? As Krillin is down and out and saying, well, I've been better. You took your time, Piccolo, as Piccolo states, well, I've been slightly delayed, as out of nowhere, a massive blast erupts out in the distance, and this is due to Goku's fight with Cooler. As Goku emerges from the clouds, Cooler is bleeding, Cooler is hurt, but Cooler is still fighting. He's unleashing blasts left and right, and every single time Goku avoids it, he seems to be caught up in something. Cooler here isn't as dumb as we've seen in the movie, but Goku uses instant transmission to blast Cooler from behind, which was was a really cool thing, especially after taking the initial blast, Goku begins to unleash massive amounts of key blasts after the initial blow that he just delivered to Cooler. And it's because of this, Goku just stands there, awaiting to see what the end result was, and through the smoke we see how Cooler emerges, and he is very, very damaged, by stating, Bastard, it's impossible, how can he, this power, Father and Frieza have felt this too? With Goku having a state, your power has clearly diminished. You should just give up. And that's what really enrages Cooler because he follows by saying, Never! I will not plead. I will not let this happen to me. Do you hear me? I am Cooler, the most powerful of the Frost Demons. Nobody can defeat me. As he swoops on up in the sky, Goku doesn't know exactly what he's about to do, but of course, just as we've seen in Cooler's Revenge, we see Cooler create a massive supernova above Goku, as Goku says, damn, as Cooler's final response is so long, Super Saiyan, in throwing the blast directly at Goku, as Goku maximizes his power, he begins to charge up for the Kamehameha. Standing there anticipating the blast, finally Goku charges up enough energy in firing his own Kamehameha, in which pushes back the supernova so much so that even Cooler is like, what? That's impossible! It can't be! 
I can't lose! As just as we've seen in the movie, Cooler gets carried out into the sun. As the narration states, you already know how this fight ends. Goku's attack pushed Cooler into the sun. Thus perish the last of the frost demons burnt alive in the sun. The heroes of this little group did not know that they had just eliminated once and for all the race of the tyrants that have enslaved several galaxies for millennia. The face of the universe was finally changed, as the manga chapter comes to a close. Now my initial thoughts for this is I definitely preferred the power struggle between Cooler and Goku in this chapter in comparison to what we've seen in the movie because in the movie it didn't seem as as if there was any effort being put out by Cooler to even harm Goku at all. In fact, it was prior to fighting him in his base form where Cooler had the upper hand. Here, it was mainly a final form Cooler versus Super Saiyan Goku battle to where it not only dragged on to Cooler's death, but it showcased the effort value in what Cooler can do in at least damaging Goku enough and forcing Goku to use the Kamehameha. That was really cool, but it also showed us a little bit of an insight to Cooler's mind and what he was thinking throughout his reign in the fact that he wanted to kill his father. He wanted to kill his brother. He never liked Frieza and he never liked his own father. And one of the many things that was cool about this specific chapter is seeing Cooler actually fight his brother. Seeing how agitated Frieza was in the fact that Cooler was always holding back against his brother but until of course he asked him to fight in their final forms, that's when King Cold stepped in and basically putting an end to both of them. In which we further kick off the Dragon Ball Multiverse special as the narration goes on to state Earth in the year 751 in Universe 13. For years, the beast had been destroying villages, leaving no survivors. The whole country lives in fear. As we take a look at Master Roshi and Krillin, Roshi goes on to state the beast doesn't try to eat or nest. It actually wants to kill, kill humans, and it acts not on random. As Krillin begins to cry, he goes on to state it's horrible. Even the pigs were eaten. As Master Roshi goes on to state yes, eaten, the villagers weren't. The beast eats when it's hungry but it has a mission, to kill humans. As Krillin goes on to ask Master, do you think that someone summons it to kill people? With Roshi having to state, yes, there is someone behind the beast, and his creature didn't finish the job this time. These houses aren't destroyed. Go into the woods and search for survivors. I'll inspect a little more here. As Krillin runs off to find survivors, Roshi goes on to say to himself, be careful Krillin, our enemy is no mere beast. It's a fierce, trained killer. As Krillin finds Goku's body lingering out in the woods, inside of Goku's head, it looks like he's getting flashbacks of his childhood, his mom, his brother, training Goku, telling Goku to kill, to kill everyone, to destroy everything, that he's not strong enough, to kill them, kill them all. And as Krillin is asking Goku, hey, are you okay? You're from the village, right? And Goku goes on to state he human? Which basically gives off the idea that it was Goku's Ozaru form that was doing all of this. Now Krillin doesn't seem like he's suspecting of Goku having to be behind all of this, as Goku goes on to state he smells human, kill, kill, but Goku's instinctive will actually pauses for a minute as Krillin goes on to state, hey, let's stick together, there's a river down here, I think you should wash up. I'll show you the way. As we can all clearly see a confused look on Goku's face, and as they're washing up in the river, it looks like Goku is getting adjusted and saying, that feels good. Hey, can you remove your shell? And Krillin's like, uh, I mean, I, of course I can, like, what are you talking about? As Goku goes on to state, wait, he doesn't look like a human, insinuating the fact that, hey, can you wash off that human smell? Because you also have to understand that Goku from this specific timeline has been through traumatic experiences to where it forces him to kill people based off of his past. His mother, assumingly enough his father, his brother, they continuously forced a narrative on Goku and further having to kill people. And after everything was said and done, we see how both Krillin and Goku put their clothing on as they begin to venture forward. Meanwhile, Roshi goes on to say you protected your people with all of your strength. I know you. I didn't know you were a master of the axe. Judging from these prints, you were able to make the beast disappear, and you were killed by the bare fists of a man. As we go back in the forest, Goku goes on to ask Krillin, why are you so kind? As Krillin responds, why? It's normal to help you. You've been so alone. Call me Krillin. As Goku says, yes, 
I've been alone, as Krillin asks are we friends, and Goku at this point, all he could ever think of is his mother, his brother, everyone basically abusing him ever since he was a baby, and trying to continuously get him to kill, to hunt, to murder anyone and everyone that he possibly can, that in his head all he keeps hearing are the words of his mother in trying to insinuate the fact that he needs to continuously kill humans, and then as they travel off deeper into the woods, Krillin goes on to make conversation as Master Rose she notices that the beast that's been destroying the villages and eating most of the people had in fact been Goku. As Goku looks on over, he goes on to state another turtle. As Krillin asks, Master, I found a survivor. And as Roshi approaches Goku, he goes on to state, Poor boy, tell me what happened here. As Goku states, You look a lot like a human, turtle. As Roshi says, what? I mean, of course, I am human. And the second Roshi utters the words, of course, I am a human, Goku goes on the attack. As then we see Goku fight off against Master Roshi. And as Roshi's trying to defend himself, he goes on to state the strength of this boy. It's huge. As Roshi attempts to defend himself, we notice how Goku is very relentless. As Roshi goes on to state it was a full moon this night. Is it possible that... Hey, boy. What do you know about this? As of course, Master Roshi has a hunch that in fact it was Goku that was basically the one responsible for murdering everybody, but Goku doesn't show any signs of stopping. Because as he's trying to attack Roshi, Krillin tries to stop him and saying, what are you doing? Stop! And he pushes Krillin on down into the ground. As Roshi says, stay away Krillin, he's some kind of werewolf, something different. As Goku continuously goes on the attack, it's pretty cool to see how Master Roshi and Goku at this point are basically fighting to the death. Why? Because Goku wants him dead, and Master Roshi's trying to defend himself by surviving, but even after his fight for survival, he manages to knock Goku into the ground. As Roshi states, poor boy, he was transformed into a monster, and it even shows when there's no full moon. He won't wake up for a long time, Krillin. It's our duty to help him. We'll save him and give him peace. But just as Roshi says this, Goku immediately gets up and begins to run away. As Roshi states, damn it, this boy is really resilient, as Krillin and Roshi go off to pursue him. But as Goku comes across this cave, he smiles and runs inside. And right before going inside, Roshi tells Krillin, stay here. I'm going to get him. In which, as Roshi goes inside, he goes on to state it's pitch black in here. I guess that's what you wanted. And as Goku goes on the attack, Roshi goes on to state I know you were here. But then as he moves out the way, Roshi not knowing, he ends up smacking a rock behind his head and manages to faint. Krillin at this point doesn't know what to expect, but all he sees incoming towards his direction is a massive blast. And Krillin at this point doesn't know what to expect. He doesn't know what his master is up to. He doesn't even know what to expect from Goku, as out of the darkness we see how Goku emerges, dragging Roshi's body. But he's dragging Roshi's body and leaving a trail of blood behind. Master Roshi was killed. As Krillin cries out, you stupid, he wanted to save you, what are you doing? As Goku says, I have to kill all humans. And one day, I'll even kill you. As Goku immediately flees into the forest, he leaps onto a branch looking back before having to leave Krillin, as Krillin is left there sobbing, and having to state Master, all you wanted to do was save him, and this is the price you pay. As Krillin stands up in complete rage, Goku vanishes as the manga chapter comes to a close. Now even though we just got through family issues with Frieza, Cooler, and King Cold, this is actually quite different in a sense to where Goku never had a master. Goku was always haunted by the words of his mother in his pursuit to continuously kill people, in his relentlessness in having to massacre anyone he comes across, and that's actually quite different because even though in this story Master Roshi dies, it's quite interesting to see how Goku actually tried to be friends with Krillin until by the and he told Krillin one day, I will kill you. And after going through what he just experienced, I'm fairly certain that Krillin at this point definitely is going to hold that against Goku for the rest of his life and the fact that he killed his master and left him for dead basically in the middle of nowhere when Krillin was only a boy. So I really did enjoy that aspect in seeing what Goku would have been like if he was a relentless monster in his pursuit of having to complete his agenda in killing humans, but I definitely preferred the first iteration and the first 
chapter of this series and seeing what it was like to see Cooler struggle, Frieza struggle, and the inevitable battle that was between Goku and Cooler in that specific timeline and universe. But in the end, everybody, let me know what you all think in the comment section below about said chapters. What was your favorite chapter? What was your favorite moments from this story? And if you guys had to add anything or change anything around, what would that be? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you all once more for watching. If, of course, you guys are new to this channel and love Dragon Ball, don't forget to punch that subscribe button, enable all notifications by clicking on the bell icon, follow me at Twitter at Unreal and Gaming, and Instagram at UnrealDBZ. Make sure you guys slap a like down below if you guys enjoyed, and leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'll be seeing you all in the next Dragon Ball fan manga review. Take it easy, guys. Peace. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming and all his social media platforms. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications so you can be the first to know every time that he uploads a new video. Oh, did someone say Unrelent Gaming? Oh my god. The fuck's up, on? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs>